There is a subject that I have been meditating on for some time now as I reflect and look on the lives of believers. Uh, Bishop, make sure that if the light can't stay on, the either should turn it off so we are not distracted, please. They should just turn the whole thing off, you know. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and as I have reflected over the years as a believer on the life of many believers, I think I have found the answer to an unanswered question on my mind over the years. An archbishop friend of mine who has been in this church, I think twice, who helped to consecrate some of our bishops, was found dead in his either house or office in Atlanta some few years ago. They, they found him dead. He had shot himself. He had shot himself. And it bothered me that what could compel a man of his stature and a man of his depth and IQ, knowledge, intelligence, to go to the extent of taking his life by shooting himself. I didn't understand it. It bothered me. A lady died in a church in the U.S. She was a single mother. While she was alive, everybody knew her to be poor and not to have enough. She was on welfare. The church supported her. When she died, they found out that she was a millionaire. That she had so much money, never tight, didn't help the church, and died and didn't make a will. None of her children, the, 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 I think the nation took about 20% of her wealth because she didn't have a will. None of the children, they were all born in the church, but none of them were committed to Christ or the things of God. They had all gone wayward and living a life without God. And God had blessed her to bless the church, but for whatever reason, she won't do anything for the church, and she even took from the church. And she died with all that money left it to kids who didn't care about God or the things of God. Those kind of things bothered me. And I've seen people in this church over the years, I've seen men who would tell me that, hey, you know, Papa, my wife don't want the church to know we have money, so that is the reason why I don't pay the, the correct tithe. And I've seen women also say the same thing. That Papa, my husband don't want the church to know we have money. So when you mention things like convention, impact, I, I want to do something. But he won't let me. He won't allow me. There's a situation where the senior pastor's wife got involved with a very wealthy man in the church. And divorced the husband, who is the senior pastor. And the man also divorced his wife, and the two of them married and left the church. I think for some of you, you might be looking at me some way, because you don't believe that you can be a Christian and a believer for these kind of strange things to happen to you. Between this week, Wednesday, and next week, I want to try and attempt to open your eyes. To see the reality of the spiritual world that nobody can be sure except you are taking the cross of Jesus and dying to self and serving Jesus by following Jesus daily on daily basis. The Bible says, let him that thinketh he stands. Take heed lest he falls. My first scripture, before I give you the title of the message, is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, which is a scripture every one of you are aware of. You know about it. 
2 Corinthians 2.11 Lest Satan should get an advantage of us For we are not ignorant of his devices Does it mean that Satan can have an advantage over the believer? Yes! Paul wasn't talking to heathens He wasn't addressing unbelievers He was talking to the church in Corinth And he said Lest Satan should gain or should have an advantage over us by us being ignorant of his devices, his method of working, methodologies, his ways of operating. If you and I are ignorant of it, it gives Satan an advantage. And anyone that has advantage over you has power over you. And ladies and gentlemen, there are so many of you hearing me online. And there are so many of you seated here under the sound of my voice whom Satan has power over you. He has power over your thought patterns. He has power over your emotions. He has power over your will. Has power over your soul. Has power over your spirit. Has power over your body. Power over your finances. Power over your family without you being aware and you don't even know it. Yeah. I met a situation years ago in Pennsylvania. A man and a wife, they were ministers. And the wife had come to Ghana, submitted to my ministry with the husband. The husband was overweight. And he had been to see the best of doctors. And they had told him exactly what to do. And I knew that if he didn't do it, he would die. And for whatever reason, all the things he should do to lose weight, to live, he wouldn't do it. He kept doing all the wrong things to keep putting on weight to die prematurely. And I knew he was going to die. I knew it. And there was nothing I could do. I didn't understand why the guy was so brilliant, intelligent, and couldn't do what was required of him to do in order for him to lose the weight to live. Cut a long story short, he died. He died prematurely. I didn't understand what I understand today. I knew it was a deliverance issue, but I couldn't grab it. In those days, I struggled with what I'm about to teach you today, Wednesday and Sunday. And I knew he was going to die. And I told the wife that you got to get ready, he'll die. I'm dealing with a situation right now of an individual facing a situation. And don't want to accept it. Using faith confessions and everything. Don't want to accept it. And pushing me to pray some prayers that won't work. And if this individual don't prepare and arm he or herself, because we are online, the thing is going to happen and it will be a shock. But this individual is acting so spiritual. I know my God is alive. I know my God can do something. I know my God. I know my God. And I'm just watching and listening. And what baffles me is that this individual is saying all these things because of the moment this individual is in. But hasn't developed the spiritual capacity and don't have that level of relationship where one can question God. You see, this God, you just don't get up and talk Bazao. You have to serve him to a point where even when you miss it and you err, you can look up and appeal to him for mercy. And I'll get into those details later. 
And you see the difference between David and King Saul. How David can do something, things he shouldn't have done. Commit premeditated adultery, premeditated murder, and God overlooked it. And Saul didn't go to that extent and God cut him off. And Samuel interceded and God said, don't even go there with me. Don't try it. Leave it alone. I will not reconsider my decision. It is done. And I'll show you some examples. And it's very, some of these things are very scary when you don't know the dealings of God with a man or a woman. And you want to subject the dealings of God to a particular way of doing things. Please bring her up. Please bring her up this way. Please. Please. You want to subject the dealings of God to a particular way. It's very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. By trying to define how God should deal with a person based on your knowledge of the letter of the word and not understanding the person's covenant with God. You can err and be in trouble. The Bible said that if my covenant with the day and the night cannot be broken, then let my covenant with my servant David not be broken. That is very scaring for me and worrying. For God Almighty, Adonai, to say that if my covenant with the day and night cannot be broken, then let not my covenant with a murderer and an adulterer be broken. God, I don't understand such things. I don't get it. Yes. And you can understand God. He said, as the heavens are far from the earth, so are my ways above and far from the earth. It's very, very important for you to concentrate and listen to me, please. I was preaching the other day somewhere. And there was these two guys, they were just talking to one another, talking to one another. And I had to openly rebuke them. I didn't like it because everybody started looking at them. I didn't like it. But it was a very bad habit. So I had to stop it. Let me move on. Please believe me that Satan can have power over you. Yes, he can. The title of the message today, we'll continue on Wednesday and finish next week Sunday, is Who Bewitched You? Tell somebody, who bewitched you? Who bewitched you? So we want to look at what bewitchment is. From the Greek translation, from the Greek word, bewitchment, it means fascinate. Fascinate. Please write it down. Fascinate. Or taken unawares or by surprise. Fascinate. Bewitchment. Number two. To be charmed or to charm a person using satanic power. To charm a person using satanic power. Number three. To put a person under a spell, a spell using satanic power. Number four, the act of misguiding or misleading an individual by a satanic power. The act of misguiding or misleading or causing an individual to err or to walk in error by a satanic power. I know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I know that. But I'm also telling you that knowledge is all around. And wherever you lack illumination in your life, Satan has advantage over you in that area. So working with God is a daily act of humility and surrender. Dying daily. The Bible says for thy sake we die all the day long. 
dying daily. Dying daily. The purpose of bewitchment, number one, is to kill, to steal, three, to destroy. The purpose or the intention or the goal of bewitchment is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John 10.10 10. What can be bewitched or who is bewitched? Number one, a person can be bewitched. A person can be bewitched. Number two, a family can be bewitched. Number three, a community can be bewitched. Number four, a nation can be bewitched. Number five, a city can be bewitched. Number six, a church can be bewitched. A leader of a, a church years ago was bewitched and he erred and started preaching a false doctrine. Succeeded by taking his whole congregation to Guyana. And believe he was hearing from God. And, and got the whole congregation to drink poison with him. And they all died. In Guyana. Something Jones. Jim Jones. Yeah. Yeah. But he began well. He began well. He began well. So you can err. Tell somebody, you, you can be bewitched. Tell them. Yeah. Because, you see, the reason why I'm telling somebody to tell you you can be bewitched, eh? don't trust yourself too much. And don't be overconfident. Overconfident when it comes to spiritual things. I'm telling you. There are some things I wouldn't want to mention and to talk about. But you can be bewitched. Children can be bewitched. Parents can be bewitched. Husbands can be bewitched. Wives can be bewitched. Leaders of nations and nations can be bewitched. People can begin well and their end can be disastrous. Some of the method that is used to bewitch people, number one, money. They can use money to bewitch you. Number two, power. Number three, fame. Number four, sex. Number four, sex. Number five, food. Number six, enchantments, where they take somebody's picture and they enchant on the picture of the person. They enchant on the picture. Seven, incantations. Incantations. They've taken my pictures to so many places over the years. Quite recently, I was in America and the Lord said, your picture has been sent to a shrine. So pray over it. And I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, whatever they are doing over that picture, you have to command it to boomerang. You have to reverse it. They are casting spells on your picture. And they are projecting things to happen through your pictures. And I stood up early hours of the morning. And I said, by divine immunity, whatever they send my picture to, under the sun or to the underworld kingdom to the regions of the sea whatever the picture is sent to me, whatever they are doing over my picture and that of my children and my loved ones and my divine helpers and my congregation by divine immunity let it boomerang and let it be overturned say overturned I have 
seen individual brothers that cannot marry. I'm telling you, I have some in this church. They can't marry. And there's a reason. They have been bewitched to believe a lie, to walk in error. And to believe that they are made to marry a particular kind of a woman. And that kind is not in the church. The whole church, with all the women in the church, married and unmarried, none of them are like that kind they are looking for. And they are still fasting and praying for that particular one. And it will never show up. Then there are sisters who have been bewitched also. To fall in love with strange men. Strange men. Men that will cause them to err. Men that will cause them to backslide. To move away from the things of God. To desensitize their prophetic sensitivity. And to compromise God's eternal destiny on their lives. Those are the men they will fall for. They will never go for the kind of men that they need to be steppers in the things of God tell you this kind of, they are too boring. And I agree that sometimes uh, believers and the brothers can be very boring. Yeah. Over spiritual. Always. I'll leave that. I wanted to say something. I won't say it. Please write down some things. Bishop, take the next point. To the sixth point. I think it's even more than that. Effects of bewitchment. Right, the effect of bewitchment, it has an effect and it can have an effect on you. Please write. Go ahead. One, operate under evil control. You are operating under demonic control. And you say, is it true? Yes, 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 yes. I've seen too many believers, men of God, women of God, believers, operate. You look at their lifestyle. And their character and the way some of them is common anger. Just common anger. And the way it operates when it comes, you can tell that they are not themselves. Yeah. Something is working them. Yeah. 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 I called somebody the other day in Europe to pray for. And she said, Papa, do you know that any time you call to pray for me, she has more than two phones. All her phones, including the one I've called on, begins to ring no matter the time I call, any time I call to pray for her. So she said, Papa, what is that? And I said, it's a monitoring eye. It's a monitoring eye. And she said, what do I And I said, block it and jam their networks. Say, I block and jam. You see, one of the things that really amazes me is the ignorance of believers. Yeah. How believers can be blinded and veiled by the same Bible. The same Bible. No weapon formed against me can prosper. And I've seen believers eh, who are so ignorant and arrogant and proud at the same time. And it is scripture. They are using the same scriptures. To blind themselves and to fail themselves. And I've seen unbelievers who don't believe the Bible but understand spiritual things than believers yeah. and it blows my mind. I just can't get it. How people can sit in church, hear the word of God and still be veiled and be blinded to the reality of the spiritual world through arrogance and unnecessary pride. Go ahead. Number two, the move away from Christ. And I'll show you a scripture where believers who began in the spirit, spirit filled, full of the Holy Ghost, driven by the Holy Ghost, steadfast in the word of God, moved away from God and from Christ and ended up in the flesh and became carnal and yet didn't know that they had fallen from grace. <laughs> Go ahead. Number three, they ignore good counsel. They ignore good counsel. They are children.
there are husbands, wives, parents, fathers, mothers that will not, will not accept good counsel. It doesn't matter the truth you present to them. They will not accept it and they will even resent you for presenting truth to them because they've been bewitched not to accept truth. And they will rather walk in error till they are totally destroyed because the purpose of bewitchment and the end result or outcome of bewitchment is to kill you. And I'll show you a very wise intelligence, strong and the strongest man in the Bible that ever lived. How he was bewitched by a woman and by sex and was utterly destroyed even though he knew that the woman was a hired assassin and she was an assignment to destroy her. He kept on playing with fire, giving excuses, justifying what was wrong until he was utterly destroyed. Didn't make sense. There are so many things eh, that don't make sense to me. There was this pastor's wife that had a beautiful song. She sang like an angel. When she sings, you can't help it and you can't sit down. And she was bewitched by fame. Left the church and went to sing for the devil. And the devil promised her money, Hollywood, and all this fame that she will get. And the husband prayed and prayed. And one time the Lord said, she has crossed a line. So stop praying. She won't come back. She's gone. Wow. Satan will appear to her and tell her how she's been exploited by the church. She's been taken advantage of by the church. And how she can be great and popular. And her music will go all over the world. And she will become a household name. And Satan blew her up. And made her to feel like you, you are a fool. You are being deceived. The church is taking advantage of you. The church is using you. Your husband, your husband, he's just using and exploiting you. You are greater than you think you are. And she bought it. She bought the lie. And Satan bewitched her by relevance, popularity. Took her away from the church. And the Lord said to the husband, she's crossed a line with me. Stop praying, it won't work. She died prematurely. She got the popularity and everything at the expense of her life. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world in exchange of their soul? Satan gives glory and power and riches. Luke chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 For the kingdoms and the glory and the riches Which thou seest was delivered unto me And to whomsoever I Satan will I give it If you would just bow down, compromise, worship me Give me your commitment and your loyalty And your worship to God In exchange of all this I'll give it to you For it was given unto me, delivered to me by Adam I can give it to anyone I will Please go ahead with the points Number four, they get involved in errors and do the wrong things. Number four, they err. They are bewitched to err and to do wrong. And they are compelled to justify wrong. They know wrong is wrong. But they have been overpowered by the spell. And therefore, they justify what is wrong. And they can even find scriptures to justify it. You see, there's a difference between when you've erred that you recognize before God, like David said, my sin is ever before me. That you can tell God, God, I know that I've missed it. I know that I am wrong. I know that I'm struggling with this particular area of my life and I need your continuous mercy. But there's another way where you try to justify the wrong. And don't accept before God that you've heard is bewitchment. Something is driving you to your own demise. And it's just a matter of time. And let me tell you something. I told some people who came to see me the other day. I said, what I preach in this house, eh, you can't find it in a book. 
I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I know. I know why I'm telling you this. Because I take my time to examine things critically before you see me stand here. Because I'm very passionate of things I, I, I preach about. I'm a very passionate person. And so I'm very, very careful that I don't misguide and mislead God's people. So it takes me time. And Bishop Oboda will tell you, I don't just come here and preach. Oh. I subject it to, to critics. Like Bishop Oboda and others. We sit down late into the night. Come and, Yesterday, come and see us. <laughs> With the professor in theology. And come and see how they were throwing arguments and scriptures back and forth at me like that. Including Bishop Oboda. You see him quiet like that. You see him in the office. Challenging my doctrines. And what's demanding that Papa, you have to justify this and I said, don't worry, I'll justify it. Yeah. And after all that, he came back this morning to critic me again. Bishop Boda, you see him quiet sitting down like that. When we are in the office and we are studying, he's not quiet like this. Though. Yeah, you can I don't say he's not humble, he's very humble. But when it comes to the word of God, you should see him wild. Please go ahead. Number five, the minds are closed to the truth. Write it down. Their mind, the children, husbands, wives, loved ones, friends. Their mind are close to truth. And it can happen at all levels of life and category. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you are. From an archbishop to a bishop to a prophet to a pastor to whatever. Yeah. There was this prophet. He was so sharp. Sharp, very, very sharp. He can hear clearly times and dates, names. Very clearly. Like God gave Ananias. <clears throat> the street, the name of the street called street the house and the address Saul was in the state that Saul was in he was blind and how go and he see you coming to him, laying hands on him and he will regain his sight and all, all details yeah, this guy was very detailed he was going to marry a woman and he was told no, 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 no that one is not for you, don't go there but I believe now that he was bewitched when I look at what happened. He married her. After he married her, whenever he's ministering, he will hear the voice of the Lord. And the Lord will be saying that there is a sister here. Her name is Abna Frimpon. Then you hear another voice will say, Abna Manzon. It's a conflict of interest. And he'll be struggling with it. Then he will call Abna Manzo. Is there an Abna Manzo here? Abna Manzo. Abna Manzo. Abna Manzo. No Abna Manzo. Then he said, Is there an Ab 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 Abna Frimpon? Abna Frimpon. Then Abna Frimpon said, Yes, I'm here. Then he said, But I had Abna Frimpon in the beginning. Why did I go with the second one? Say, Bewitched. The reason why people follow prophets, eh? Prophets are human beings, so they can err, and nobody sees in part. No, all, we all see in parts. So don't follow gifted people, because gifted people most times have even problems than those gifted. I'm telling you. It's just that my role is not to destroy, but my role is to build. And I believe that vengeance is of God, and vengeance is the Lord, and He will repay. I was praying the other day about a situation and I said, Lord, God of vengeance. I said, you are the God of vengeance. I said, vengeance belong to you and I appeal to you. Oh God of my vengeance, I appeal to you and it is now in your hands. Let me not be denied and let him not go unpunished and let me see in the land of the living your vengeance. And prove to me that of a truth that you are the God of vengeance. 
and I am appealing to you, O God of vengeance, shine forth, show for thyself. And I said, for all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till I see your vengeance on such individuals. Yeah. Please go ahead. Number six. They experience continuous confusion of mind. They experience continuous confusion in mind. Confusion. They are always confused about something. It's a spell. It's a bewitchment. Confusion. Mental confusion. Mental torture. Mental bombardment. Always bombarded. I was talking to somebody the other day trying to help the person, guide the person, and... He misunderstood my counsel, saw my counsel from a direction, and I said, what is wrong with you? How come you never see truth? How come you are always suspecting something? You are always in suspicion that, oh, Papa is trying to control. And I said, listen, you know something? I really don't think I want to counsel or help you anymore. From today, I'm drawing a line with you. I don't want to talk to you. I love you. I'll be your Papa, but I don't want to counsel you. Because you've been programmed not to accept truth. You are always seeing something that is not there. You are thinking that, oh, somebody has gone to tell Papa some things. Papa is misunderstanding me. I'm misreading. And I say, I'm not misreading anything. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm trying to help you that you are working in error. The way you are perceiving and seeing things is wrong. I just said, you know something, let me just leave it alone. Let me leave it on. Go ahead. Yeah, the continuous confusion of mind shows in different forms. A, fatigue. 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 They are always tired. Fatigue. Mm -hmm. B, anxiety. Anxiety. Anxious for nothing. Even when there is no problem, they will create one. There are people like that. When there is no problem, they will create a problem. And they are always coming with a, hey, have you heard? Hmm. Something is happening, oh. And they are always sending some WhatsApp of some bad something happening somewhere. There's one particular, I blocked the person out of my phone. I said, why? Why are you always sending me bad things? Why? Bad things. Things of people dying and some disaster calamity. And I said, ah. Why every time you are sent, I just said, block this third person out. Send me something nice, Kakira. Me too, I deserve some good news. Why are you sending me bad things all the time? There are people like that. They are programmed to respond to bad things. Go ahead. See, distress. Distress. They are always worn out. Stressed out. Always. On that some kind of tension, pressure, they can't relax. They can't relax. They can't relax. Go ahead. And this shows also in loss of self-control. They can't control their emotions. They can't control their attitude. They have no self-control or governance over everything. Everything goes. Amen. Next point. Number seven. Continuous accident, that's the effect of bewitchment. Continual accident means accident prone. They fall in the kitchen. They are climbing the steps and they sleep and fall. They are coming down the steps and they sleep and they fall. And they hurt their knees, they cut the toe. They go to the bathroom, they are bathing and they fall. They are entering the car and they use the car to jam their finger. Or an accident on the road. Every time something is going wrong. They are accident prone. It's a spell and a bewitchment. Go ahead. Number eight, loss of income. Loss of income. They are always losing money. Make investments and nothing comes out of it. It doesn't matter how good the investment is. When they put their money in, nothing will come out of it. Go ahead. Number nine, loss of reputation. They lose reputation. Scandalous things. Scandals. Victimization, scandalization, stigmatization, stigma, 
all the time something threatens their reputation you say how do you know i've been there before i've been there before and i found out that there were preachers and people who were operating with the six and seven books of moses occultics diviners magicians who felt that my influence was too strong so they have to find way to discredit me oh yeah 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 and after praying and dealing with things i have people who will come to me from certain works of life in society to tell me that this information and this and this it came from so so and so and so and so yeah yeah life is some way number 10 loss of position loss of position write it down and then loss number 11 affliction with diseases and pain yeah they are always in pain always afflicted with something many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them out of them all whatever the affliction is i command your deliverance this week i said i command your deliverance this week whatever they have packaged for you that for the rest of your life because you are a believer and because you are working with the lord some of you in your family nobody has ever been born again before you are the only true believer in that family since god said let there be light so there are powers and forces that are determined to afflict you to torture to harass and to buffet you to give up the faith and to say what has become of this your faith and your christianity and working with jesus but let it boomerang in the name of jesus yeah let it be overturned by the power of jesus name and i'm praying that you will not be the last believer in your family because when they see that they can't stop you they go after your children but let your children be delivered in the name of jesus let your children have an encounter with god in the name of jesus that after your time if jesus tarries that there will be many more like you in your family who knows god and have seen the light and walk with the lord put your hands together and if you believe it shout yes when my father died and we took him to the village to bury him that was when i understand my father's affliction and battles and that was when i understood my own battles and afflictions when i saw the place he was born and the human beings in that house and what they stood for i could understand why my battles are many yeah you see i'll tell you something for those of you how many of you are not married give me a wave of friend you are not married and i'm not asking you to come forward i'm not asking you to stand but if you are not married just give me a wave offering i just want to help you with information that's all now watch this do you know that some blood types don't have to mix you know that yeah spiritually there are some genes that must not mix the bible said i'm going to tell you something deep but unless you are spiritual then you won't understand it the Bible said a man from the house of Levi went and married a woman from the house of Levi and gave birth to a goodly child because the DNA of both and the blood agreed. Number two, the Bible said thou shalt not, it talks about mixed seed, say mixed seed. You know what mixed seed is? A sower went to sow and when men slept, an enemy came and sowed what? Sowed what? Tears. And the servant said, did you not sow good seed? And the master said, an enemy has done this. So there were tears and with. Tears and with. Good seed and tears. I'm, I'm saying something very, very deep. But some of you, you won't get it today. One of these days you will. And when you wake up, you bring me an offering. I'm telling you. And the Bible talks about mixed garment, mixed streams. So if you end up having a child with somebody whose spiritual DNA or spiritual blood type doesn't agree with yours, <laughs> it will be weak and 
in the children you produce. So your children will have split personality. Madala Magadilas. Amadalugi Bagadu Satahas. Zata Akafadus. Deli Kadunda Wasinia Kamahan. Ilayada Kuvidia. Amaya Sanakabahasias. Let heaven overturn. Let heaven overrule. Let heaven reverse. In the name of Jesus. So you can say, I am a good mom. I'm a good father. And yet, you will see some signs in your children that shouldn't be there. It's mixed seed, mixed garment, mixed stream. DNAs that should have never come together, came together to produce something they shouldn't have produced. Mulaya Matokama houses. One day, some of you will get it. Today, you won't get it. Yeah, because the way some of you are looking at me, I know you. I can tell you are looking at me some way. But one of these days, you will get it. You know what? Let me, let me just, let's go ahead to the next point. Go ahead, Bishop. The mode of operation, how bewitchment works. Mm -hmm. One through sorcery. One through sorcery. Please write it down. Mm -hmm. That is magic or power gained from the control of evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Especially through divining and necromancy yeah number two spells spells the use of magic or mysterious demonic supernatural forces. i know that for you no weapon form against you shall prosper <laughs> i know those scriptures very well how they sneak into our mix and they work their way yeah they work their way through gifts through all kinds of things yeah If they can't get you and you are married, they will work through your wife to cast the spell. Yeah, they will access your wife or access your husband or access your children. How do you know? I've seen it. And sometimes I have to warn my kids that this friend of yours, that friend of yours, I don't want them around me. Say, Daddy, but they are my friend. I say, no, no, I'm not saying you should befriend them. But keep them away from my house. Don't bring them by my gate. Go to them. I don't want them close to me. Papa, you, every time you are too spiritual, you are always seeing something. I say, yes, I'm always seeing something. Yeah. You walk ordinary. Yeah. Keep walking ordinary. And keep walking by your senses and your intellect. Today, we have compromised many things in the church. Substitute education for character. Yeah. Discernment has been substituted with psychology. 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 Yeah. Substituting the supernatural move of God in the church with systems, planning, and organization, and order. Yeah, order. Closing one minute to time. Everything. Systems and planning and organization. As much as God is the God of order and all those things are critical, they, must ne they can never replace the place of the Holy Spirit and there is no substitute for the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. When we take away the Holy Spirit, we are finished. And I'm just telling you, we take away, and a lot of churches have taken away the Holy Spirit because we have become pleasers of men. We want to be in the good books of men. Want to run a church that is tight with time, tight. Everything is so organized. Yeah, everything is so organized. Even what we say. We have to even write it and read it. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Everything is so calculated that we have to say it the right way. So we don't offend anybody. Political correctness. That is what is killing Europe and America. Finish, Bishop. Number three, satanic strategy. 
strategy that is a common local satanic strategy to bring continuous evil mm -hmm. on a person or a community or a community or a nation like Ghana like any African countries you know sometimes you hear people say you know this my friend we were together meant well since they occupied this position or came into power they've changed I don't recognize them anymore what has happened bewitchment yeah bewitchment I've been to some very powerful places and seen some very powerful individual there was a guy in this church when we were in my father's house in the 80s I went to the office one time Bishop Nyaku remember this person and I saw this lady sitting before him in his office I didn't say anything and I said come see me later in the day he came around and I said that lady I met sitting who, who he said is my new partner my new partner and I said this one is your new partner Wangana Banzani Wanga this one will finish you and hijack you he said Papa Papa it can't happen I control the damn business so you control the damn business okay brother I left it years after he came to see me she had taken over 89 percent of equity in his business cut a long story so she had to buy him out of his own business and by the time he got to know who she was she had finished him when i see people who don't have respect for spiritual things and they spend more time on physical things, natural things, and sometimes money, power, access, and think that they are very comfortable, and they derive their confidence not from the Lord, and not by their spiritual experience and encounter with God, but from natural and material things and gain, you are to be pitied. It's just a matter of time. And the enemy will show you that the places you derive your confidence from is under his command and control. And he can come at it at any time. Please don't be too confident. For it is written, let him that boast, boast of this one thing, that he knows I the Lord who execute judgment, justice and righteousness on earth. Please. My faith is being on nothing else but Jesus' blood and righteousness I cannot trust the sweetest pain but only on Jesus' name on Christ's see that please be see that number four they use satanic bullets or arrows satanic bullets and arrows <laughs> the bible talks about fiery darts taking the shield of faith by which you can quench all the fiery darts of the earth. what is a fiery dart they are just some small little arrows with fire at the mouth of it and when it hits you it sets you on fire sets everything around you on fire so something little little foxes destroys them dying. something just little can be blown up magnified and become a big issue which you can't settle i've had a lot of couples come to my office <laughs> and i'll listen to both sides and i'm tired just listening can make you weary by listening to both sides, I get weary and tired. And I said, let me, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. And I'll deal with the strange fire. Quench every strange fire. Command the veil to be lifted of them. And I'll send them to Bishop Obodai for counseling. And they come back fine. You know why? Because I realized that, you know, if you don't quench the fire, that is causing them 
to act the way they are acting towards one another. No counseling can change anything. They won't listen. Yeah. The man is pointing finger at her. He is pointing finger at him. And sometimes the whole family, the children are pointing finger at their mother. And some are pointing finger on their father. Tell you the situation recently. <laughs> and the father said, Papa, I can't believe that my daughter that I sold things to take her to the best of school, Princeton, can come out and deal with me this way. And I've forgotten all the sacrifices I made to educate her. Talk to me like I'm nothing. With tears in his eyes. And she won't listen to anybody. And I said, you know something, chief? It's not her. Don't hold it against her. It's not her. You are the target. You are the target, not her. And the enemy is using what you love to hurt you. So you must master this thing. Cover her with love and pray for her. And attack whatever is working through her and accessing her to attack you. Oh yeah, I've been there. I have children. I know what it is. When your children can switch. And you are blessing other people's children. And you see things happening to your own. And you say, God, why? Why? Why am I blessing other people? And look at mine. What did I do wrong? What is it that I haven't done for these kids? What is it that I haven't done? What else will it take? I'm beginning to understand how the enemy can bewitch our own seed against us. Bewitching your flesh against you. Oh, yeah. Lay two cards. Bishop, finish. Eh? I think, I, I feel bad and I think we should pray. Then finally, they use suffocation sometimes through your dream. They use what? Suffocation. Yeah. Through your dreams. Yeah. Access you in your dreams. Strange dreams. Nightmares. Get some dreams and you wake up and say, what kind of dream is this? They are projecting things. To intimidate you, to threaten you, to put fear in you, make you anxious over everything. I just want to read one scripture to you before we close. Galatians chapter 3. There are more things I will show you later. Galatians chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. Oh, foolish Galatians. Foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Turn to someone and say, who has bewitched you? You. Yeah. You can be bewitched. Sitting there looking so beautiful and handsome and intelligent, there is a possibility that you, eh, you have been bewitched. That something has bewitched you or somebody has bewitched you. Not to do what must be done. There are people, they know that if they can fast and pray, something will break, but they will never fast. They won't pray. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will wake them up. I knew a guy before he died. I won't mention the name. The brother is still in this church. He was the youngest guy in the history of this country occupying that position in this country in some time, some time gone past. And one day, he used to go to another church, but he would visit here every now and then. And he used to work with my auntie, Mary Grant. So I called him and I said, you know, Whenever you are traveling, let me know. Let's cover you, okay? He died. And the wife said, before he died, continuously for a number of weeks, at a particular time of the night, he will wake up with a bad dream. And he will say, he has to pray. And he will kneel down by the bed and sleep. He will wake up kneel by the bed to pray and sleep and kept on sleeping till the day he had the accident and died but the Holy Ghost kept waking him up and said listen there is an impending danger or imminent danger wake up watch and pray lest you fall into temptation the Holy Spirit gave him an advantage to counter it but he was bewitched not to do what was required now lakumatalasis 
Leketuki Basaya. Don't say where is my God. Nalaya Katuma. That is exactly what God wants you. To, the devil wants you to say where is your God. But the Lord God reigns. Ah, go ahead. All foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? That you see, the bewitchment is to prevent you from walking in the truth you know. To get you to err from truth. Fall away from the truth. And walk in a deception, in error, and in a lie. Go ahead. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. You have crystal evidence. Physical evidence. Go ahead. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law. That means these people there, eh, before time, they had the Holy Spirit. They had received the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were very spiritual people. And I know people like that who, when I got born again, they were very spiritual people. And for whatever reason, they are, they've ended up in the flesh. And when you talk about spiritual things, they, they push you away. Billy Graham had a guy, strong believer. He went to Princeton to study a subject. By the time he came out of Princeton, he has become an atheist. He didn't believe in God again. He tell Billy Graham, forget all this Bible, Bible, Bible. It's not true. Hey, to that extent, yeah. Intelligence, IQ, knowledge produces 12 and half percent of the successes of life. 87 and half percent of the successes of life is derived from having the right attitude towards life. Attitude is everything. So please don't go there with me about how smart and intelligent you are. Because I've seen smart and intelligent people bewitched. Go ahead. Receive ye the spirit of by the works of the law or by they hearing the faith. They become legalistic, very legalistic, critical of everybody. The law makes you critical of everybody and even of yourself. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by faith? Are you so foolish? Uh -huh. Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Yeah. These are spiritual people who become so carnal that any time you talk about spiritual things, they're offended. They don't want to hear it. They take offense. Yeah, they object spiritual things. And once upon a time, they were deep in the spirit and they become carnal people. A friend of mine called me the other day. He said, there's this movie you must watch. And I asked him about the movie. And I said, no, I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. I'm not. Netflix, go there. And I said, I'm not going there. I will listen to the word of God. Or read the Bible. Yeah. Why do I have to watch that movie? By the time he explained the movie, I said, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to be contaminated. Leave me alone. I don't want to be contaminated. And you can think I am weird. Yeah. I know some of you, you think this man, eh? Hmm. He's on well. Yeah. But it's my being some way that has kept some of you spiritually alive. I'm telling you. Look at, look at all the sons I have produced in ministry. When any of my true sons in ministry stands here, you will know that this is Papa's children. Yeah. Yeah. 